Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been several developments on the electricity front this week, including another confirmed Kuberg delay, movement on a battery energy storage tender, and ESCOM restructuring developments. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Chanel. Firstly, there is now confirmation of the return to service date of Kuberg Unit 1. Yes, so uh, up until now we haven't had a firm date. Now Eskom has confirmed it's the 3rd of November. And I understand that this Unit 1 went down, I think on the 10th of December last year. The initial expectation was that it would come back around June. It's a major outage because they're replacing the three steam generators. And I think there's an admission now that they've totally underestimated what it involves to replace the three steam generators at at a, a nuclear reactor of this size and the time has just slipped and slipped and then there were reports that it was going to be first September then October and now there's confirmation of November. What they also confirmed though is that the unit 2 outage which will also involve a major overhaul of, uh, of that unit including the steam generator replacement will then take place on the 7th of November. Now all eyes will be on Kuberg to see if there's not another outage slip, because if there is, it's going to get very tight and then there could be an overlapping period. But I think they're fairly confident now that that's the, the outer date and they won't have this, this fear that there's going to be both units down for a protracted period. But there's still a lot of uncertainty around Kuberg getting a license to operate for another 20 years. The, the regulator hasn't made any pronouncements on that. Um, there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of uh, uh, testing that still needs to under, be undergo. And um, Eskom actually scheduled Unit 1 to go down again on the 21st of July next year, which is the date that its license officially ends. Its 40-year license officially year ends so that they can do some catch-up work that they haven't been able to do. Um, and they just can't... Uh, they've scheduled for a 200-day outage and they can't... Uh, have anything shorter than that because they don't know whether they're going to have a license. In the meantime, they're still trying to get a separation of the Unit 2 license, saying that that unit only came on in November 1985, unlike Unit uh, 1, which came on in 1984, and therefore it should have another year and a half to go beyond July next year uh, to operate. And whether it will be back from its outage, which is start going to start in November, remains to be seen because we see how long the Unit 1 outage took. That's confusing. It's been expensive. We still don't know the price tag. There's no way it's 20 billion Rand, which was the figure announced in 2010. Uh, but we don't know what the final figure is. And it's been very expensive from a load shedding perspective because having one unit out one stage of load shedding. Uh, so for the, from an economic perspective, this whole delay, very badly managed program, and it's very difficult, it is a tricky program, there's no doubt about it, and replacing really big equipment, but it really seems to have been poorly managed all round. And uh, it's not clear that Kuberg will be operating after July next year, still not. Responses have also been received from bidders for a big battery storage project. Yes, I think that uh, this, this tender went out and there were some delays in terms of the bidding process because Again, you know, the grid uh, connection issues were, are major, so Eskimo changing the rules. We know that's gone to court and there hasn't been a resolution there yet, but this battery storage program, we're caught up in that. Even though this will help strengthen the grid, uh, there was a pause on cost es estimate letters which are necessary for these bidding processes. Uh, so that, th that led to uh, the bidding date being moved from I think June to around August. August the 2nd was the final submission date, might have been July. So there was a, this delay in the system, but now the, the bids are in for this 513 megawatts, which is about 2,000 megawatt hours that these batteries can deliver into the system across five sites in the Northern Cape, which have been specifically selected by Eskom to try and strengthen the grid in that area using battery storage. And these 17 bidders, bids are now in, and then we'll have to wait and see. Uh, two months now, there'll be a bid evaluation. Uh, we then should have the preferred bidders announced, I suppose, around October. And then it will be about trying to get these projects to financial close as quickly as possible so that construction can begin. So we're still some way off from actual shovels in the ground, 
but it's a major milestone. ESCOM's unbundling also took another step forward this week. Yes, there was a letter that was received by the ESCOM board from the Minister of Public Enterprises, Praveen Gordon, saying that they can go ahead with the transfer of assets to the distribution entity. So we know that under the ESCOM roadmap, which was announced in 2019, there's an unbundling process underway. Uh, and when this letter was produced, it had this word sale in it. So it sparked a bit of a social media storm around whether this is privatization, but actually it's, uh, uh, maybe the language was unfortunate, but, but whatever it, it was, it, it's, it's really very much in line with what was announced in 2019 and in, in various iterations of policy announcements since then, including in the State of the Nation, which is basically that generation, transmission and distribution will be unbundled but will initially be held 100% uh, under ESKIM holdings, so they'll still be uh, state-owned entities. So we know that there's been a lot of focus on the transmission, the grid company and the system operator, and their license, uh, first license has been approved by NERSA, two more to come. There's been less focus on the generation and the distribution unbundling, but this was the next step where the Minister of Public Enterprises has given permission. It's not clear whether the Minister of uh, Finance, who also needs to provide uh, his concurrence, has provided a similar letter, but I s assume it's on its way if it hasn't been uh, delivered already. And that basically is preparing this new structure, this unbundled structure of ESKIM, which is seen as quite critical in the reform of the market making the business much more fit for purpose. I think South Africa is one of the few markets which is still a vertically integrated market. And we can see it hasn't been serving us well. It did serve us well for many, many years, but in the last 10 years, it really hasn't served us well. It hasn't given the level playing field that investors need on the generation front to know that there's going to be an even sort of treatment of, of our generation projects by the grid company. And then on the distribution end, this is very important. ESKIM plays a big role in the distribution sector. We did try to have a major restructuring of that sector under the so-called REDS program, which uh, hits a constitutional brick wall. But this is where more and more the weakness is in the system. And uh, ESKIM being a, possibly one of the stronger components within the distribution sector, having a, that focused business will be very important and possibly a trading element to that business as well because we see some private traders uh, coming through. So that's going to be very important because eventually uh, some of these electrons have to go through the distribution system, not just the national grid. So there has to be a focus and attention here and having a focused business that's large and has critical mass is going to be important. They can maybe step in where municipalities can't deliver. But I think it's only really one piece of the puzzle. We're going to need a major rethink at the distribution level. There's too many weaknesses there. It's too much, we're going to present too much of a risk. Soon we're going to have enough generation capacity. When I say soon, maybe towards the end of next year, we're going to have enough generation capacity. But can we deliver those electrons, one through the high voltage power lines, the transmission grid? I think there's a lot of work going on there, but more and more, at the local level, is there, are those wise businesses really uh, up to it? Have they been fully capitalised? Are they being properly maintained? I, I really don't think so. So I think that's going to be a major focus. And I think having this large ESKIM distribution entity or whatever it's going to be called in the future is, a, is an important next step. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.